Well, hello, good people. I'm Dmitri. Over the past three months, we've been monitoring Amazon.com.ca and .co.uk to see what people are buying for best-selling gaming mice. This search has revealed a few interesting things. Number one is that mice education has gotten really good, so people know what they want based on reviews, based on feedback. Number two is that mainstream brands are lowering their prices to kind of compete with these like really cheap knockoff stuff that is available and just completely floods the, the Amazon markets. And number three is that also mainstream brands are putting their items on sale more often to basically rank them up higher in the top sellers and best sellers. So this uh, is going to be interesting. Let's begin. Dimitri. These are the top selling gaming mice on Amazon? Really? To be honest, this list changes every week or so. So two weeks ago when we were writing this video, the Razer Viper Ultimate was in the top five, but as of time recording today, it's in like 27 slash 21 for the dock and the non-dock versions. Still, these top five are not surprising me in any way whatsoever because they are affordable or relatively affordable. They are in stock, therefore available to purchase and also are very well reviewed across the internet. So let's take a look at the G502 Hero, for instance, currently sitting as the number one top-selling gaming house on Amazon.com. This makes sense to me. The infinite scroll wheel. Once you get used to it, it's very hard to go back. Plus, you have that immediate control to going back to the regular tactile steps as well. Ah. So satisfying. This infinite scroll wheel is just as satisfying as your sub to the channel. Now, this is a mouse I've recommended in my own reviews many times. For those who want an ergonomic shape that will fit a variety of hand sizes, the flaring for the thumb in particular is super comfy and the overall texture around the mouse is pleasant. It's still one of the very few mice to offer smart weight adjustment around the sensor with 3.6 gram modules that you can spread at the bottom for front or back heavy mouse. By default, it's still a bit heavy for me at 124 grams especially after having used lightweight mice over the years, but not everyone is obsessed with going super lightweight and potentially you want a heavy mouse for a bit more control for some slower paced gameplay. The Hero sensor is well trusted, adjusted in 50 DPI increments, offers really low liftoff distance and will absolutely not disappoint. Plus, if you're into buttons, you have at least six for assignments. And finally, the really affordable price point of just $50. So all these features at 50 bucks, this is an easy recommendation and makes sense to me why this is still the number one mouse on Amazon right now. I could sleep to this sound. This next mouse, ooh, it is something very special. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. The Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3. It won't block your memory thanks to the offset construction. It will not sound like a hurricane thanks to the Quiet Shadow Wings 2 fan. It will give you a peace of mind with exceptional cooling, easy installation, and the interesting bicolor design. Check it out below. So that second really unique mouse is also from Logitech, the G305 Lightspeed. This is probably the most popular wireless gaming mouse because it's comfortable, affordable at $39, and one of the first mice in its class to give confidence confidence for wireless play. I love the simplicity of the removable back to access the AA battery and the labeled USB receiver, plus the on-off switch at the bottom. I have used this mouse for years as my main because of that really comfortable and safe shape. It's not too small and perfect for many hand sizes. The weight might be perceived as a bit too much with the back heavy shape because of that battery, but I find it to be very nice by default. And pro tip, you can use a AAA lithium battery, so it's much lighter than your standard AA with a AA adapter, so it will shave off some weight and give you a really fantastic lightweight champion. This is what confidence in your hand looks like, okay? The hero sensor in here is nothing to complain about. We've got super low lift off distance, four DPI levels and onboard memory to carry those DPI levels with you. I will give an audible mention to the Razer Arachi V2. It has replaced all my G35s in the office and when I travel because it's lighter, it's a bit more comfortable for me. It has Bluetooth support at the bottom and it also comes with these cool custom backs to give you a little bit of pop of color for your mouse, it's pretty cool. Although it is almost double the price of the G305, but still I'd recommend it. And you can check out my full review right over here. The third item is this, the Razer Viper Mini. And this thing took the market by surprise because of its shockingly good price of $39. And that's, you know, relatively affordable, but it's also when it comes to Razer, that is incredibly affordable from Razer's 
you know, traditional, really premium prices. Also, not only is Razer one of the very few companies to do lightweight designs without perforations, but this is one of the first small mice to do so. All the basics are covered here, like a really light Speedflex cable, large PTFE feet for smooth glide, a comfortable ambidextrous right-hand only shape, and Razer's optical 50 million rated switches, eliminating any debounce delay and giving you that instantaneous actuation. Is nice. This is basically the perfect small mouse. If it fits, it sits, you know? For my grip style, I find the inner curve on the right side to interfere a little bit with a comfortable pinky placement, and it's why I prefer the G305 or the Arachi V2 shapes because they don't flare at the back. Still, I can see why people love the Viper Mini for FPS. The 8500 DPI optical sensor is an excellent performer, and my only hesitation is Razer's annoying approach to Synapse. Everyone loves to hate on Synapse and it's good that we have guest modes so you don't have to log in. Uh, and this mouse has onboard profile so you can save your DPI settings and they travel with you regardless if Synapse is installed or not, but the RGB settings are not saved to the mouse. So it will constantly do that rainbow puke if you don't have Synapse running. And that is a shame because this illumination is textbook tasteful. Now my recommendation for a slightly cheaper alternative would be the Qatar Pro XT. It's technically perfect for 2021, awesome crispy switches, lightweight design at 73 grams, fantastic sensor with one DPI increments and a similar small body to the Viper Mini and the G305. Honestly, I was quite surprised to see both Logitech and Razer to compete in the top like 20, just because they're mainstream gaming brands and I thought they would be overwhelmed by other cheap gaming junk that is so readily available on Amazon, right? So really good for Razer and Logitech, but it's not until we come to the fourth place then this conversation about, ooh, the questionable top five come into the equation. So here we have the Pictech T7 ergonomic gaming mouse for around $15. And this is where the top five bestsellers become a little bit iffy, as soon as you access the warranty information, you immediately get prompted to become a VIP member to receive free products in exchange of sharing and posting positive Amazon reviews. This mouse feels literally like a downgrade in every aspect, but you know, what can we expect for a gaming mouse under $20? Would the experience be like even decent. So at 108 grams, it is lighter than the G502 Hero. That's impressive. And I will say it's a comfortable shape with a pleasant feeling texture on the primary triggers, while the sides are kind of sharp and plasticky. Normally, both side buttons have the same texture, but the front button here is dotted. The lighting is everywhere with the breathing color effect to reflect on one of the five DPI settings. Obviously, the cable is terrible in comparison to something like the Viper Mini, but the main drawback here would be the sensor. So first of all, it's not centered and is weirdly offset to the left, making any wrist aiming frustrating by default. This results in unintentional angular cursor movement that is absolutely not okay for gaming, especially when you lift the mouse. So on top of that, tracking is not precise at all. It almost feels like there's angle snapping built in. So I don't have that pixel precision of trying to aim correct and find my target. It's just, it doesn't feel like it's an extension of my arm. It feels like I'm fighting it to go where I want it to go. Also, the liftoff distance here is so high. As soon as you lift the mouse and place it back down, the cursor, jitter, and movement is gonna be all over the screen. So I'd rather not play than play with this. But hey, the shape is good. The switches feel okay. The scroll wheel is not terrible. So it's okay for work, but uh, don't expect miracles, especially uh, on a cheap. And finally, in the fifth place, we have this. The Victsing wireless ergonomic mouse at a really attractive price point of just $8. I did not even realize mice could be that cheap. It works off a AA battery, which is not included. The USB dongle stashes into this open cavity underneath. There is no power button, no RGB, so a pretty basic but impressively light design at 85 grams with my lithium AA battery. Now, surprisingly, the sense of performance here feels much better in a way that the liftoff distance is lower, so it doesn't jump around like the previous mouse, but the wireless lag is real. With larger movements, you can feel the mouse catching up to the cursor, so this is a big no-no for gaming, unless you're slow and steady with your aim, but in reality, don't expect any real precision. The glide is disappointing, so if you overshoot the target, aim correction is difficult, plus the lack of precise DPI means you're stuck with the five default levels. The shape, however, is comfortable, perhaps best for smaller hands and claw grip. It still feels like a cheap mouse with the faint interior rattle, 
but the combination of side textures and the lightweight body is a great value add, although with the battery compartment where it is, it's a really back heavy mouse. However, the scroll wheel and the primer triggers are perfectly adequate for that $8 price point, although the switches are pretty loud and the scroll steps are a little bit too soft. Still, I can see why this is in top five. It's super cheap, under $10. It's wireless, that's impressive. Very comfortable to, to use, and the sense of performance is actually even better than the previous gaming mouse that was wired. So these best sellers definitely carry some surprises with them, and just because people are voting with their wallets doesn't mean things are quality, all right? So guys, I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. Spend responsibly, as Ebo would say, and uh, let us know which other category for top five Amazon stuff we should check out next. And please, nothing inappropriate, okay? I'm Dimitri, subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next video.